どうしてもファイルナイジェラス・ファイス・プレゼンツ・サニト・カシム・サティマ・セダ・アフリカ、ニス・エンブリス・メカナイズ・ファーミング・ニス・アグリカチュー・バリチェーン・トゥ・インクリス・エコノミー・ソス・ケール・アン・ブース・エコノミー・グローズ・エン・プロダクティビティ・オン・デ・コンテネント。He was speaking at the World Economic Forum panel session with the exec Chief Executive Officer of First Run Group, Mary Villakazi, and Secretary General of the African Continental Free Trade Area, Wam Kelemene. Take a listen. Agriculture holds the key. But are we going to, we are in some sort of a time capsule. A hundred years ago, our poor fathers were using horse and cutlasses to eke out a meager existence. Now we have to embrace. Modern agricultural practices, regenerative agricultural practices, fertilization, tractorization, intermediate, not the advanced tractorization that is、uh, embedded in Europe and the Americas. And that would be, the whole mantra is on increase in yield so that Africa will be in a position to pit itself and add value to the world. Our combined GDP. It's expected to be about 3.4 trillion US dollars with a market of 1.3 billion people. And the beauty of the African continent, besides the tremendous natural resource endowments, the most important of our endowments are the human resource components. We are the youngest continent in the world. For instance, Nigeria, the average age of the Nigerian. Population is 19.、Mm. And this huge youth bulge, we can truly transform them into demographic dividends. I'm afraid I'm an eternal optimist. I don't want to see it as a demographic disaster that will consume all of us. Because once we wear our thinking caps as leaders, once we reach out to the global community for partnership, I believe that Africa stands poised to be a driver of change and growth in the world. According to Corn Perry, a global consultancy output, by 2035, there will be 65 million global talent deficit. The United States will suffer from 6 million, Brazil, 6 million, Russia, 6 million, even India, the global capital of outsourcing, will only have 1 million talent surplus. And nations like Nigeria, Egypt, the generally the African continent, we are in a position to really take advantage of the digital revolution in the world. For instance, Nigeria, there are more English speakers in Nigeria than in India. Our proximity to Europe is an added advantage. And most importantly, even our addiction. I will tell you a story of a young lady in, in, in Abuja. Her name is Mrs. Amal Hassan. She runs a digital lab, a digital outsourcing hub. This is a lady who has employed 7,000 Nigerians. This is just a tip of the iceberg. Opportunities abound in the outsourcing industry and in so many other、uh, development frontiers. India is expected to generate $100 billion from outsourcing alone in this 2024. Yes, we are an oil giant, but how much do we ever generate it from oil? The highest we have ever generated as an oil producing nation was $35 billion in 2011. So, I believe that Africa holds the promise, and I want to use this platform to seek for partnership.、Mm. For me, I don't subscribe to the idea of begging, no. We can carry our poverty with dignity.、Sure. We can seek for partnership, for friendship, for genuine relationship that would be mutually beneficial、sure. to the investors. As well as to the African people. Sure.、Um, I agree with you,、uh, and、uh, Mary, I'm going to come to you in just a short while. I agree with you just in terms of the fact that,、uh, I mean, we don't have to beg,、uh, just given the fact that、uh, it, it can be a mutually beneficial exchange. If you look at the fact that、uh, we do house some of the、uh, most、uh, 
important uh, assets that the world needs right now, from the minerals that we mine to power all forms of uh, transitions, um, energy transitions, green transitions, to to the workforce uh, that you did mention. Although perhaps a caveat can be uh, placed as to whether the workforce is uh, skilled uh, to the same degree as in other parts of the world and is competitive as well to the same degree. That That's perhaps uh, something that we can park on the side. So we've got a lot of things going for us, essentially so. Um, and it can be a mutually beneficial exchange. But what we have seen is we've seen a lot of money going away from us as well um, in terms of the continent. Uh, some money has been patient enough to actually just sit on the fence and wait and see for certain things to come right. Um, infrastructure, some of the challenges there, um, but perhaps even governance and concerns around how things are run and managed perhaps the biggest concern there. So in this uh, exchange that you seek, this partnership exchange, sir, what is your message to some of the uh, investors uh, from outside the continent who might be interested in what you're saying right now? The numbers that you presented do look appealing, but they do, of course, still have their concerns. Well, uh, the concerns about leadership is quite germane because as Chinua Achebe, one of Nigeria's foremost novelists said, the problem of Africa is purely that of leadership. But there is a sea change in the quality of leadership prevailing in Africa now than it was 20, 30 years ago when the Mobutu Sesekos of this world were holding sway. For instance, in my country, we have a leader who is clearly poised to determine and redefine the quality of modern leadership. In the past six months since we assumed the mantle of leadership, he had taken far-sighted decisions, including the biggest elephant in the room, the withdrawal of oil fuel subsidy that was an albatross round the neck of successive Nigerian government. The reform of the foreign exchange regime, where we had multiple exchange rates, and beyond that, the setting up of a tax, a fiscal reform committee, so that we can have a single line of taxation. There's a lot still that needs to be done, but be rest assured that in terms of leadership, there is a sea change in our fortunes now and in the past. At the risk of embarrassing him, seated here is our Minister of Defense, uh, Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy. He's a humble and celebrated person, gentleman, living in the same house for the past 30 years, which is quite unlike an African, you know, for positive and our preference for big things. He has been living in the house. house. Yes, in the same house, <laughs> just a three bedroom house for the past okay. 30 years. Okay. <laughs> if this is a mansion that was built 30 years ago <laughs> and has been renovated, then perhaps. <laughs> and look at our Minister of Communications. It's a square peg in a square hole. He's a young man, a political. In fact, he was even critical of our candidature. But when my boss, when he sees people with contrarian views but have the capacity for value addition, he is in that digital ecosystem. He runs a lab, uh, a digital lab in Lagos. He picked him. He's a young man. He's in his thirties and gave him the mantle of leadership to drive the process of change in the communications industry. On infrastructure, on infrastructure, certainly we have huge infrastructural deficit. But the word for crisis in the Chinese language is way this. Way stands for danger and this for opportunity, yes. Those crises, those challenges also provides us with the opportunities to reposition our nations in terms of infrastructure. And this is why the investors can easily come in, especially with the enabling environment created by the present administration. I don't want to confine myself to Nigeria alone. Go to Ghana, go to South Africa, go to Egypt, go to Ethiopia, where Ibi Hassan is doing wonderfully well. So Africa is beckoning on the wall for genuine partnership that will really work for the mutual benefit of all of us. Okay, okay. And so Mary, uh, that comes in you. 
uh, as the largest uh, lender on the continent by market value. Uh, so the decisions that you make are not emotional ones. Um, it can't be uh, like me uh, because of passion and love for a continent. It needs to be decisions that are based on risk-weighted uh, returns as it were. And so just reflecting on what some of the colleagues have shared, but also as first round, what you're thinking and how you view the opportunity that is Africa right now. Just spell out that investment case for us. Thank you, Fifi. Um, it's been very encouraging listening to um, the comments from the um, Vice President from Nigeria. As first when we, uh, we have an investment and a, and a business in Nigeria, so I think all the reforms that we've seen um, over the last seven months have been, have been encouraging. And I guess, as you say, that if we're in Nigeria, um, does well, the continent does well. So we certainly also sit um, with, with, with an appreciation and would like to encourage you to see through all the structural reforms that have taken place um, over the last while. And, and Fifi, I guess when we have um, a discussion like this, you started off and spoke about um, this long-held promise around the continent, um, given the demographics, given all the resources that the continent has, and actually um, what's been delivered. But I, I think when one looks at the next 10 years, uh, I certainly am encouraged that there are a lot of structural reforms that have been necessary that have been necessary um, over the last while that have not received as much attention as one can say they're receiving now, including, I guess, the development as well in a very big um, economy like Nigeria. You look at some of the structural reforms that are underway in South Africa. Uh, I mean, we're still one of the most industrialized um, countries on the continent, but we know the impacts of not having energy and what that has done to our economy. So, you know, there is a lot that one can look at and be encouraged around what the next 10 years uh, will bring.